So, uh, as I just was mentioning that, even when you have just these six or seven blocks there, how you arrange them can have a bearing on the PPA of the memory that you're designing. Hmm? So now let's start with the circuit designs. Each of these circuits we will look at one by one. Okay. So bit line pre-charge. One very simple way to pre-charge the bit lines is put a PMOS which is always on. Hmm? What's the problem with this? Static power is there, and CMOS are always on. Yeah, see, look at it like this. Uh, memory is typically off throughout. Hana? That was the reason why we were also able to remove the PMOSs from that 14T D latch. Most of the cells were always, most of the bit lines, you don't need to, uh, nothing will turn on. Memory is usually off most of the time. Access rate is very low. So one could say, oh, this extra power consumption is only for a very short duration of time. I will still go with it. So power is not really the driving criteria. The fact is that if the PMOS is always on, then the bit line, so now then the discharge, so this is the charging path and there's a discharge path on the same capacitance, which is the read path. So the memory cell would now be able to, would now have to sync current, not only of the original bit line, but also the current that is being injected by these PMOSs, which are always on. So you will not really be able to discharge the bit line to a low level and you may not be able to read your memory at all in some cases. So the alternate is clogged pre-charge. When the, when the read operation has to happen or when the write operation has to happen, only then the pre-charge would turn off. So now there is no, no race condition or there is no ratio logic that is happening between the PMOSs of the pre-charge and the bit cell, which is trying to sync current. Are you able to see? How so clocking clock, is So this clock is clock Read sir, can sloppy word lines, sir. Uh, this is IO region. Will IO region have word lines? Uh, no, sir. But uh, we can consider clock as a word line, right? So, so this has to be, this clock should arrive a little, so this clock should arrive a little earlier than word line, actually. So that when the word line comes, the pre-charge is already off. There is no short circuit path. Okay, and uh, this is an internal, internal generated signal. Yes, so. this is an internal generated clock. Typically, you will call it, call it as pre-charge clock. So this clock will typically go to pre-charge circuit. Okay. Whenever the active read or write cycle is happening, the pre-charge would turn off. Okay. So, do you notice there is this extra transistor over here? What do you think is the role of this transistor? So can it be that it keeps both bitline and bitline bar at the same level? It gives both bitline and bitline bar the same level. What do you mean by same level? It equalizes them. Mm. Yes, sir. Something like that. So after every clock cycle, it will set uh, them at uh, same voltage level. Okay. So this this additional PMOS is called an equalizer. So that is really the primary function of the equalizer. It ensures that both the bit line and bit line bar are pre-charged at the same level. So that if you were had read a zero earlier and now you want to read a one, uh, so the other bit line has to discharge. If they were already equalized, just the discharge has to happen. If they were not equalized, let us say bit line was at uh, 995 millivolts and BL bar was at 10,005 millivolts, uh, 1,005 millivolts. Then if I now want to discharge this, I have to discharge an additional 10 millivolts in my design. Are you able to see this? Can you repeat again, sir? So if I do not have an equalizer, hmm, if I do not put this transistor there, 
can it happen that bit line would go to 995 millivolts and bit line bar to 1005 millivolts can it happen so because will it may have happened that, it may have happened that i read uh, one on this side for the past 100 cycles and in the past 100 cycles i read a zero on this side so even after whatever time i gave for recharge my bit line is unable to go beyond uh, 995 millivolts can it happen so i mean if my uh, supply voltage is vdd then both of them can rise to will rise to vdd now ultimately i mean why is that case happening ultimately 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 could be 5 nanoseconds later also na yes sir so but like why it is not uh, i'm not able to understand that why 995 it is getting limiting by that no so uh, let us say any rc network ha huh? you connected a supply over here uh, can you tell me when it will go to full vdd output sir ideally it is infinite it will never go to vdd yes sir ha na so we know that okay no 63% it will go in tau an additional uh, 20% it will go in uh, two tau and so on that much we know but full vdd can you can you tell ever no, no sir so for bit line that is what i am saying 100 cycles have elapsed and therefore bit line bar was precharged to 1005 already precharged okay right and this one cycle you read a zero on this side now uh you read a zero on that side and one on this side let us say something like that happened okay right so what is the status for so this one the bit line would not be able to really because its precharge is coming and going coming and going coming and going it is not able to really right. precharge to full 100 1000 millivolts or 1000 10 millivolts jo bhi right if you have the equalizer in every cycle it ensures that the two sides get the same voltage there so, could still be an error of 1 or 2 millivolts that is fine but an equalizer uh, the role is to equalize the voltages of the bit line and bit line bar during precharge sir uh, when is this clock exactly used sir is it used only before read cycle because in write we are supposed to make our bit line to high and bit line bar to low right so in that case this uh, if if we give this clock then both the bit lines will be high both the bit lines will be high what do you yeah. mean yeah i mean okay so in that case if we if we give this clock then both the bit lines will be having the same value but in write cycle we should be having uh one should be at the uh, at uh, uh, positive vdd and other should be at ground right for right so cycle this clock should go one even in right cycle right cycle ha ha yes sir uh, uh, that that was my doubt actually yeah, i mean so this clock would go one in all the cycles all active cycles this pre charge would be turned off all uh, this is pre charge clock na let us hmm, say this yes. is pre charge clock so this pre charge clock has to come in every active cycle whether it is a read or a write it has to come hmm yes. okay so after that we'll be uh, we'll be uh, lowering or uh, i'm like equating our bit line and bit line, bit line bar according to the write or read operation so the read if it is the read operation the bit lines are already equalized when the pre charge clock was zero yeah if it is a write operation or if it is a read operation once you turn the pre charge clock off now the connection to vdd is gone now it's simply the now bit line is simply a floating capacitor there yes sir depending on which side you had a zero stored that bit line would discharge or whatever bit line you want to write a zero uh, you will you do it through the write driver okay okay got it yeah so sir uh, sir earlier when you were talking that ki one bit line is at a lower level it is a case that that bit line is having basically we are to the right driver in subsequent cycle we are discharging it also and we are charging it also but other is sort of maintained at vdd so that is kind of coming that is able to reach up to vdd but other is not because due subsequent discharging to the right time at the right yeah time. because it because for the past 100 cycles 
it was continuously in pre-charge mode. It never got this up. So it's like kind of it got hundred cycles for charging of the capacitor. It would charge it closer to VDD, nahi. Okay. Yes. Whereas the other other one was charged within just one one nanosecond or less than one nanosecond. Right. Part of. Okay. So it got much lesser time, and therefore this pre-charge will not be useful VDD. There will be some residual difference between one bit and and the other. The VDS would appear, and then it will equalize, kind of, sort of. Mm. Yeah. So the equalizer, the VDS would be there, and that would kind of ensure that the charge flows from one bit line to the other. Yes, sir. So, and one more doubt regarding the Vashnas question only. So, when the, for example, my pre-charge is off, my bit line has been pre-charged. Now, for example, I'm thinking of the right cycle. So, one of my bit line has to be discharged to zero, and one then is that. So, once my pre-charge cycle is off, now, we, even before my word line comes on, I need to ensure that one of the bit line is off. So, during this pre-charge and that word line turning on, during that cycle, difference between the word line, the word driver is like coming to picture and discharging the bit lines. Yes, the right driver will turn on after the pre-charge goes off. Okay, before the bit and before the word line comes on. Yeah, so you will only after bit line has discharged, you will say my word line will start to rise. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. Sir. So, yes. So I'm still not able to understand uh, during the right operation how we are keeping a bit line to zero and the other one to high. So you do not do it with the pre-charge transistor file. You do it from the uh, uh, you you do not do it from this place. You do it from the uh, right driver. We have not even looked at the right driver yet. Uh, okay. Okay. This is only the pre-charge circuit. Okay, sir. Hmm? Okay. So now the next circuit that we look at is column decoder. 